Since man landed on the moon, countless conspiracy theories have surfaced all over the web. Some so virulent, they spread like a virus, seeping into many areas of the media. Some of these theories, predictably, hold more water than others. Some claim we never went to the moon. This regardless of the proof that has continued to surface over the years. NASA claims to have lost the telemetry from the moon landings also. The motive behind this claim is unclear. Yet no matter how unlikely, they continue to claim that it has been missing for decades. Conspiracy theorists often overlook the astonishing contributions which NASA has also made to modern society. Yet some theories actually claim a literal polar opposite of moon landing conspiracies. These not only agree that we did indeed land, walk, and even drive on the moon, but claim we have been back in secret and to explore a rather astonishing thing. According to numerous sources, the most compelling of said claims began on YouTube, with the release of some extraordinary CGI footage of a claimed moon landing and the exploration of a simply gigantic alien spacecraft. Due to the moon being so difficult to reach, and the fact that anything which either crashed, landed, or was possibly even abandoned on the moon, even billions of years ago, would have been preserved in an incredible condition. In April 2007, videos began appearing on YouTube under the username RetireDafB, telling the extraordinary story of a supposed Apollo 20, a secret lunar mission that had discovered the existence of intelligent alien life on the moon. Then, on May 23, 2007, Italian UFOologist Luca Scantaburlo managed to secure an interview with an individual who claimed to be the creator of the channel, a man by the name of William Rutledge, who later claimed to be, in fact, himself a retired secret American astronaut, who at the time was living in Rwanda. Rutledge claimed to be the commander of the Apollo 20 crew and to be the owner of the retired DAFB account. However, the interviewer never met Rutledge in person, as the interview was conducted over Yahoo Messenger. During the interview, however, Rutledge claimed that Apollo 20 was a top-secret mission, launched in mid-August 1976 from Vandenberg Air Force Base near Santa Barbara, California. He also claimed that it was conducted jointly by the United States and the former Soviet Union. He also alleged that other missions were made by American astronaut Leona Snyder, a now-established fictitious persona, and former Soviet cosmonaut Alexei Leonov, the first human to perform a spacewalk. The purported landing site of the mission was near Gaillot Crater, a feature near the much larger Del Porte Crater. Rutledge said the videos show that he and Leonov discovered the remains of an ancient lunar civilization. He also said they brought back artifacts to Earth for study, including a hibernating female humanoid. It is a story which we found highly compelling. There are many theories which orbit the Apollo space missions. However, apart from the obvious moon hoax claims, there are many other baffling tales surrounding these missions. Surrounding not only a proof to the validity of the programs, but also a seemingly transparent approach to presumably many, although we would never believe all, of the anomalies that the American Space Agency encountered during those incredibly expensive yet highly successful missions. Watched by nearly everyone spinning around on our small globe, one very few lucky enough to travel away from like to call the blue marble. There are many unexplained images that have been snapped of the moon by NASA. Some claimed as showing nothing like that of the famous pyramid we have covered in the past, seemingly rediscovered on an image once claimed by NASA as an overexposed image. Yet there are many other anomalies and objects NASA neither confirm nor deny the existence of, yet still release said images to the world. They do not deny and equally accept that many they cannot explain. The Shard this image is a 44-time enlargement of a lunar orbiter frame coded LO384M. Taken with a medium-resolution camera at a distance of at least 250 miles, it shows an object dubbed by Richard Hoagland as the Shard. Interestingly, although some have dismissed the object as a simple camera malfunction, 
The shard also possesses a shadow, correctly aligned with the position of Saul at that time. According to Hoagland, quote, Poor resolution images, like this one of the shard, have led some to conclude it is an ephemeral outgassing event. However, the Enterprise mission enhancements reveal no spray or splatter, which would be consistent with such a conclusion. He goes on to state, the object appears to be solid, though badly battered by meteors." End quote. Above and behind the shard is the tower, another among this collection of mystifying images of apparent lunar objects. The tower has been researched and studied by many people since its discovery among NASA's images. A massive structure, calculated as being an incredible 7 miles high, this estimation clearly makes any consideration that the tower is indeed a real structural anomaly, soaring from the lunar surface a tough pill to swallow. Yet the images remain an incredibly difficult thing to explain, and the tower's cuboid feature atop just adds to this ongoing mystery, yet one of deep intrigue, is the mystery of Castle. The name given to an object captured by the Apollo 10 astronauts during the Moon Orbit mission codenamed AS-10-32-4822. It is of a one-mile-long object floating miles above the lunar surface, like a satellite to our satellite, that, even more amazingly, is possibly like that of what makes Saturn's rings, that being ice crystals of pure water, is apparently, according to future enhanced image study, also made from a material alike glittering glass. Apart from the reports of strange music being heard on the far side of the moon, a claim few will ever be able to confirm the truth of, this extraordinary object is something very few know of, and even less have studied. Unless more attention is given to such incredible anomalies, ones witnessed by us already and so relatively close to our little home, we may never know what they are. They are, undoubtedly, highly compelling. In 1910, construction workers in Mexico were building an insane asylum atop of what they presumed was an ordinary mountain. Upon digging into the earth, they almost immediately discovered the ruins of an extremely ancient structure. It was later realized, yet not largely shared with the world, that the hill is actually what is now classified as the largest pyramid on earth. Hiding under the grass, trees and many tons of earth sits the once lost and now found Great Pyramid of Cholula. With a base four times the size of the Great Pyramid of Giza, just how did this amazing monument get lost to time? Also, why is it more heard regarding this enormous structure within modern academia? It sits just outside Puebla, the fourth largest city in modern-day Mexico. It is 450 meters wide and 66 meters tall, with a floor area comparable in size to nine Olympic-sized swimming pools. Not only is this structure the largest pyramid on Earth, but it is also officially and undeniably deemed the largest monument ever built on our planet. In 1519, Hernán Cortés, a Spanish invader, had his men march into the great Aztec city of Cholulu. They subsequently massacred 10% of the population and built a tiny church on top of the hill as a symbol of their conquest. The church they built is now known as the oldest continuously occupied building in North America. Historical records suggest that when Cortés arrived in Cholula, the pyramid was many thousands of years old and already entirely overgrown by vegetation. Additional legends state that the Great Pyramid was so sacred to the Cholula people that they covered it with soil in order to hide it from Cortez's army. We may never know how it became buried under the sediment it now rests beneath. Experts believe the pyramid grew in stages, successive civilizations improving on what had already been built. When an old pathway was removed in 2013 to make access for a drainage system, workers reportedly uncovered at least 63 complete and very ancient skeletons. Some of these remains accompanied by numerous alien-looking skulls absent their skeletons. Ancient myths from the region told of giants building the structure, with the city's inhabitants being of normal size. From the 1930s until today, great efforts have been made to fully excavate the pyramid. Although these excavations rarely gain any media attention, regardless of the pyramid's enormous size and possible importance, over five miles of tunnels have been dug inside the structure, all open to the public if you can get in them, as locals have reportedly reclaimed the pyramid as their own. 
Even though extensive exploratory research has been undertaken, the age or indeed the possible builders remain an elusive mystery. Just what type of tombs could still be buried beneath the largest officially classified pyramid on Earth? Were alien remains really found amongst the ruins? And if they were, why was the world kept in the dark regarding the results of this testing? Official reports released at a much later date concluded that they were the decapitated skulls of deformed children. This conclusion, however, just raises more questions. We will keep you posted on further information discovered regarding the site. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. More than two years ago, a team of explorers led by scientist Vladimir Melikov were on an expedition within the Russian caves on Mount Bolshoi when they made a miraculous discovery. Reports from Russian newspapers at the time indicated that a briefcase and two alien-like skulls were discovered in the cave systems of the Caucasus region. What is amazing about the briefcase is the insignia which can be found upon its front. It is the emblem of the Anenerbi, once the Nazis' most secretive institutions. Founded by Heinrich Himmler in 1935, their mission was to find evidence that the Aryan race had once ruled the entire world. But they also branched into occultism, paranormal research, pseudoscience, and the study of UFOs and weapons development. All due to Himmler's obsession with such things. The strange appearance of the skulls has led to speculation that the Nazis were in contact with aliens. Mr. Melikov was reported as saying the creature is unlike anything known to man. He said among the most mysterious features of the skulls is the absence of a cranial vault or jaws. The eye sockets are also unusually large. He added, even when compared with the skull of a bear, it is hard to think that you do not have in your hands the remains of an alien creature. Paleontologists in Moscow were shown pictures of the skulls. They reportedly dismissed the skulls, saying they could have been exposed to sand for long periods of time, which could have altered their shape. Russian newspaper reports have also recorded other German discoveries in the area, including last summer when Elbrus Hunters found a second suitcase with the Anenerby logo. It is thought to have belonged to the huntsman of the German division, Edelweiss, and was found along with a ring showing a soldier in a mountain cap and a Nazi uniform. The Edelweiss was an emblem of the German mountain troops during World War II. Also in 2014, reports said locals in the same area found the burial site of German infantry, believed to have been killed in an avalanche years earlier. What do you think about the finds? Are these skulls proof that the Nazis knew of the existence of aliens? Or maybe that they were even in contact with such entities? The skulls and briefcase are now said to be stored at an archaeological complex in Belovode, a site which stores many historical artifacts. Further studies are desperately needed before they vanish from public view.